Hello, we are back again with me talking to my laptop and you listening to me. Okay, so today we are going to learn on uh, 8.3 gases exchange in humans. So I hope you have done your revision on 8.1 and 8.2 which is the type of respiratory system and also the mechanism of breathing in humans and animals. If you are done with that, then we shall continue in this subtopic, the gases exchange in humans. Okay, um, the learning objectives here is uh, that you have to be able to communicate about the external and internal respiration. Okay, the gases exchange between the lungs and the blood. Then the transport of the resp respiratory gases from the lungs to the tissue. Then uh, gases exchange between blood and tissues and lastly transport of respiratory gases from tissues to lungs. So there are four here, uh, four levels that you have to master. Okay, how is the gases exchange and the transport of the respiratory gases. Basically from the lungs to the tissue and the tissue back to the lungs. Okay, here what you should know uh, from your previous lessons and all that, you should know that uh, gases exchange in humans is divided into external respiration and also internal respiration. Now, external respiration is the exchange of oxygen and uh, carbon dioxide between the air within the alveoli or we say the lungs and also the blood within the capillaries surrounding the alveoli in the lungs. Okay, and internal respiration is the uh, exchange of oxygen and carbon dioxide between the cell bodies and the blood within the blood capillaries. Okay, that is internal respiration. So you must know the difference between the uh, external respiration and also internal respiration. Okay. So, uh, partial pressure of gases. Now, partial pressure of gases is very important for you to learn in this subtopic because we are going to repeat on partial pressure till the end. Okay, now, so what is partial pressure of gases? Now, partial pressure of a gas is a pressure exerted by a gas component in a mixture of different gases. Okay, so the atmospheric pressure um, of about 760 mmHg uh, millimeters of mercury, yeah, we call it, at sea level consists of 21% of oxygen and 0.04% of carbon dioxide. Okay, now, the so this shows that the partial pressure of oxygen is 160 mmHg, while the partial pressure of carbon dioxide is 0.30 mmHg millimeters of mercury. Yeah? That's the, the unit that we use. Okay, now the concept of a uh, partial pressure is important in predicting the direction of the gas diffusion. Now, a gas diffuses from high partial pressure to a low partial pressure. Okay. Or it is said that the gas diffuses according to the partial pressure gradient. Now, further later, I will mention partial pressure gradient. So, you must know that when I mention that, it means the gases move from high partial pressure to low partial pressure of that particular gas. Okay? Okay. Moving on, eh? now let's look at gases exchange between lungs and blood. Okay, now this is the first level. Okay, blood from pul pulmonary arteries that enters the blood capillaries surrounding the alveoli carries a low partial pressure of oxygen and a high partial pressure of carbon dioxide. Okay, compared to the air within the alveoli. So, oxygen in the alveoli now will dissolve in the moist walls of the alveoli and then be diffused following the partial pressure gradient across the alveoli membrane into the blood capillaries. Okay, from high pressure to low pressure, the oxygen diffuses in the alveoli, uh, 
blood capillaries. Okay, meanwhile, the carbon dioxide from the blood capillaries now diffuses following the partial pressure gradient into the alveoli to be excreted during exhalation. Okay, so from high pressure to lower pressure of carbon dioxide. Now, so this continuous process of respiration and blood flow from the pulmonary arteries in the blood capillaries are very important in maintaining the partial pressure gradient of gas to ensure that the external respiration between the alveoli and the blood capillaries goes on continuously. Yeah, oxygen in, carbon dioxide out. Alright? So next is the transport of respiratory gases from the lungs to the tissue. Okay, from the lungs to the tissue, of course, we need the oxygen. So, the oxygen diffuses from the lungs to the tissue. Now, oxygen is diffused from the alveoli, correct? So, the alveoli has a high partial pressure of oxygen, okay, into the uh, blood capillaries, which has a lower partial pressure of oxygen. So, when it diffuses into the uh, capillaries, it binds with the hemoglobin in the red blood cells to form oxyhemoglobin, okay? Now, the cell bodies have low partial pressure of oxygen because oxygen is used up during metabolism. So, when the oxygen reaches the cell body or the tissue, it breaks down into hemoglobin and also oxygen. So, the oxygen can be used by the, the uh, tissues. So, this will cause increase in uh, the partial pressure of oxygen within the blood capillaries. Okay. So, oxygen will then diffuse from the blood capillaries into the tissue or the cell bodies following the partial pressure gradient. So, remember that oxygen is transported in the form of oxyhemoglobin from a high partial pressure of oxygen to a lower partial pressure of oxygen from the capillaries to the tissue. So earlier we have seen uh, the gases exchange between the lungs and the blood. Now we will look into the gases exchange between the blood and the tissue. Now we know that the active cell bodies carry out metabolism using oxygen and releasing carbon dioxide. So this causes the cell body to have a low partial pressure of oxygen and a high partial pressure of carbon dioxide. The cell. Uh, so, the oxygen then will diffuse following the partial pressure gradient from the capillaries, the blood capillaries, into the tissues or the cell bodies we call it. And on the other hand, the carbon dioxide will diffuse following the partial pressure gradient, the high partial pressure of carbon dioxide, to a lower partial pressure of carbon dioxide from the cell or tissue back into the blood capillaries. And then this carbon dioxide is then transported back to the lungs to be eliminated through exhalation. Same thing like just now. Just now was about oxygen and now it's like transporting back carbon dioxide out from the tissues. So next we will look at the transport of respiratory gases from tissue to lungs. Now if it's going back to the lungs meaning we are talking about carbon dioxide diffusion from the tissues back to the lungs. Now, carbon dioxide is transported in three ways. 70% of it is carried in the form of bicarbonate ions. 23% of carbon dioxide combines with hemoglobin to form carbaminohemoglobin. And the balance 7% is dissolved and carried as carbonic acid. Okay, so now cell bodies or the tissue have high partial pressure of carbon dioxide due to respiration. So, carbon dioxide is diffused from the cell bodies following the partial pressure gradient, high to lower, into the blood capillaries of the cell bodies. Okay, now the carbon dioxide is transported in the blood circulatory system to the lungs to be eliminated. Okay, so here the first one, carbon dioxide is transported in the lungs, I mean to the lungs, in the form of bicarbonate ions. Okay. So, carbon dioxide is diffused from the cell bodies into the blood capillaries and then into the red blood cells. Now, in the red blood cells, the carbonic anhydrase enzyme catalyzes the conversion of carbon dioxide and water into carbonic acid. 
H2CO3 ya carbonic acid now the carbonic acid will then break down into hydrogen ion and bicarbonate ion okay the bicarbonate ion will then diffuse from the red blood cell into the plasma and then transported to the lungs via blood secretion okay the hydrogen ion also will bind with the hemoglobin to prevent the blood from becoming acidic so now in the capillaries of the alveoli now the in this the opposite process happens the bicarbonate ion now will diffuse back in the red blood cell and converts into carbonic acid the h2co3 is the carbonic acid now the carbonic acid is then converted back into water and carbon dioxide so the carbon dioxide will then diffuse following the partial pressure gradient from the blood capillaries into the alveoli to be eliminated during exhalation now you have to remember that carbon dioxide can also be transported in the form of carbamino hemoglobin correct the second one so in this case uh, some of the carbon dioxide binds with the amino group in the hemoglobin within the red blood cells to form carbamino hemoglobin okay so it is trans transported via blood circulation to the lungs to be eliminated now in the blood capillaries of alveoli carbamino uh, hemoglobin will break down and release carbon dioxide molecules that will be diffused into the alveoli to be eliminated through exhalation so in that uh, in this case that the carbon dioxide will bind to the red blood cells forming the carbamino hemoglobin just like the oxygen earlier oxygen combines with the uh, red blood cell it forms oxyhemoglobin and then it diffuses in and out according to the partial pressure of that particular gas so with that we are done for subtopic 8.3 and i hope you do understand this lesson if you don't you have to go through back the video read your textbook and then make your notes also and then you come back again to test your understanding by answering question from formative practice 8.3 on page 137 of your textbook if you can answer the questions that means you have mastered the subject okay now the questions are number one what is the value of the partial pressure of oxygen in the atmospheric pressure number two in what form is carbon dioxide transported in human blood circulatory system Three, explain how carbon dioxide is transported from the lung capillaries to the alveolus. And lastly, in what form is oxygen carried to the tissues? I hope you can answer all the questions. With that, I will end my video here. Thank you for watching and please don't forget to like and subscribe my channel. Bye.